Hello, ciao, bonjour, guten tag. My name is Jesse Warden. I'm a software consultant. Today, we're going to talk about Google Dart. Google Dart is kind of a rabbit hole of a platform. It is huge. It is not just some tool that Google just threw up there like they do a lot of tools to experiment. I mean, this is some serious engineering effort, some serious business strategy, and there's an insane amount to cover. So I have to do a series of videos because it's so large. And one thing I wanted to talk about today is just the introductory of why, what's your appetite for some of the language features they have, some of the IDE features, things like that. And talk a little bit about the business aspect of why Google Dart matters in the grand scheme of things from a web perspective. Your first question is, what is Dart? Well, if you go to this website called dartlang.org, okay, it's basically can tell you everything about Dart. There is so much to read. Dart is a platform. It's not just the language or the compiler or the runtime, okay? So Dart encompasses a language often referred to as Dart Lang, right? It refers to an editor called the Dart Editor, right? Which is based on Eclipse. It refers to the virtual machine called Dartium that currently is installed in Chromium, which is their development browser. Someday will be in Chrome. It also refers to the compiler, Dart 2JS. So that's under this umbrella of Dart. And finally, they have something called a package manager or a pub. And that falls under that purview as well, okay? So those five things, the language, the editor, the virtual machine, the compiler, and package manager, all wrapped up under one, form part of the platform. Now the platform has other libraries and SDKs that go out, you know, outside the purview, like there's a Dart SDK, there's the built-in stuff, there's the Polymer exceptions, right? So Dart encompasses all that. But why, why does this matter? It's, it's cool that Dart, Google built all this stuff, but what does this have to do with web development? I thought you were a JavaScript guy, Jesse. So stay with me. Let's talk business. Google wants a better web experience. Why? They make lots of money and started from web advertising. The more time you spend on the web, the more activity you do, the more engagement you have with it, the more opportunity they have from their plethora of web properties to make money, right? So anything that they can do to make the web better and empower people like us who build things for the web to make it more awesome, will increase people to come there. That is number one, the number one driver. Number two, Google has an ecosystem of products that have evolved over time to help enhance that or contribute to that vision, right? Number one is Chrome. As we know, Chrome is not the first, but it's one of the most powerful things Google has ever done. They have a browser, which is their platform, their own platform. They kind of took a cue from Microsoft and created their own internet, as it were. They embedded Flash Player. They have their own native client. They have their own JavaScript engine. They are working on their own video codecs. There's a lot of things that Chrome does to integrate with Google's product line, right? So the central apex of the web and how many people have now experienced it worldwide, way more, you know, it's not so much in America with IE, but worldwide, Chrome has really basically taken over the web. Okay, so it's made a huge impact. That is their stepping stone, you know, for all the things web related, okay? Number two, JWT. If you're not familiar with GWT, but you use Gmail, well, newsflash, Gmail is written in GWT. GWT was a way for Java developers to actually develop web applications, right? So they know Java, they know backend, they know strongly typed languages, they know oop, all that stuff, and they look at HTML, CSS, and they go, what the blah? GWT helps solve that, right? So they can use their libraries and everything else, and it's good to go. GWT has a very entrenched and good ecosystem. So GWT is not going away. But there are very, very lots of similarities between Dart and GWT, which we'll cover, okay? So GWT allows them to ha satisfy that strong Java type developer who wants to build web applications, not Android applications. See that? Number three, Clojure. So Google Clojure compiler was their first step, or first step of many, to build a compiler that's better for JavaScript. Now your first thoughts is JavaScript's interpreted. We don't need those silly compilers. Well, when your projects get bigger, a compiler can help you. You don't need it, but if you can get it, it's awesome, right? So they have all kinds of metadata for strong typing. They have an established module syntax, which you can use right now, and it'll work for older browsers in ECMO 6, right? So it works for both. So compilers are cool like that. They also have Angular. Now, Angular is not theirs, but they support it. Angular is one of the only web frameworks that's really embracing a lot of the up and coming web standards with polyfills and shims and all that other stuff. So you can use the, you know, the web standards that are coming down the pipe today, as well as some other software development concepts like dependency injection, yada, yada, right? So they have that. That's part of their framework. If you're going to build a web app, you're going to have to have some kind of framework. There are people who can do it without it, but the majority of us want a standardized set of MVC ways of building things, right? with very common software development concepts. Number four, Google Analytics. Anything you do on the web is data-driven. 
The companies who are kicking butt today's, whether they're startups, whether they're presidential elections, right? Remember Obama's um, re-election campaign made the tech news because they had a, a really good analytics team to really figure out the polls and everything else. So analytics is how a lot of people, brands, large companies drive their metrics, okay? Most of them are building their own things now, but every so often there's a niche market for that. And Google Analytics plays a big part in tracking what people on people do on the web and on your application. So you can make more informed decisions from a business perspective, right? Additionally, Polymer Project. So Google looks at the web and go, this is seriously broken. There are a lot of things we can do to fix it, but we need to provide a kind of abstraction layer up of, of top the insanity or wild, wild west to make it so other people can use it. You can have accessibility to all the new and up and coming web standards, as well as having it work on older browsers and older technologies that don't advance yet with the same code base. Pretty powerful. Polymer has a lot more, but what's interesting to note is that Polymer and Angular are very similar. If you look at some of the ways that they do elements and bindings, it's if you know Angular, like it's night and day. And that throws a lot of people off because they're like, well, isn't this like Angular? It's like, well, no. Angular has a lot of other features for building apps that Polymer doesn't. Polymer is really the tools that you need. It's not actually the blueprints and the guidance and a lot of the more higher level direction on how to move forward with that. Smaller other ones, Google Web Fonts, right? So if you want to do fontography on the web, that's always been the big thing. That was kind of why Flash Player was invented back in version one, was to have good fontography, right? You take vectors, break them up into vector shapes, and they look the same on all platforms and all browsers, right? Well, now you have Web Fonts. Right? Google Web Fonts and their service that handles that. So, you know, again, many, many different aspects, you know, from the engineering perspective, from the analytics perspective, business intelligence, Google's really trying to fill the gap for all these things in the web. And the last two that really matters to us are design and development. Now, Visual Design has Web Designer. So if you look at Web Designer, that's Google's kind of version of Adobe Edge. Not really. I mean, it, there's, there, it does a lot of other things, but more of it's made for designers to build those kind of web experiences, right? So when you had Flash and you're trying to do simple designs from a branding perspective in a design agency, you know, Nike ad or whatever else, maybe even something a little more sophisticated, you would use Flash for that. Now you use Web Designer or Adobe Edge, right? So what's missing? We have GWT, we have Google Closure. Well, those are not tied together and there's no overarching platform design and vision. Well, that's where Dart comes in. Dart solves the tooling problem, solves the compilation problem, solves the language problem, right? I know it's fashionable to beat on JavaScript, but it solves a lot of problems. Solves the pub problem, right? We have no package manager, but it's completely different by a different entity. Well, now they have their own, all encompassing, right? And they have their own virtual machine. Now, the virtual machine is optional. It's kind of weird, so we'll get to why that really matters. But the virtual machine allows a lot of opportunities that don't necessarily, you know, really click with a lot of web developers who think, okay, I'm going to deploy my web app to the desktop and on mobile devices, and if I have to get any apps, I use PhoneGap. Done, right? Not necessarily. What if you could take those apps that you build and have them run faster on certain platforms, right, to encourage customer bases to utilize those things? Nothing you have to do to change your code. It just happens to run better, right? So Google Dart allows that from a perspective of a web developer mindset, not Java, right? Not native, but web developer. And you can utilize those speed games from Dartium on Chromium or on Android, right? Or any other place, Google TV, anywhere this VM, which is a lightweight engine, can go. Very similar to Google's Go language, except Google Go is more about getting nice and friendly and awesome behind, you know, on infrastructure and servers. You can think of Dartium as kind of the opposite of that, the one that users see and interact with, right? So again, filling all the holes to this web development, application development story. Google's you know, Dart really plugs a major hole in that, a major keystone for you to build these experiences, okay? If your thing is web development, front-end development, right? So 90% of your time is doing front-end code, not Java, Python, Ruby, whatever else. You got it? The language. Google believes that JavaScript can be better they believe it can be faster and evolve faster. Now, obviously, if you look at the ECMA and you look at what's coming down the pipe and some of the discussions, you have brilliant people from a variety of different competing right, camps negotiating for the most part in a reasonable place. This is good, but it's slow. Business doesn't go that slow. Business goes fast, right? People you know, no longer hold jobs for the rest of their lives. They need quick experiences. We have quicker deliveries, tighter iterations of development, right? So that high, you know, evolution of JavaScript is not conducive of how business works. 
So Google's like, cool, we'll just make a language and fix it. Just like Microsoft did with TypeScript, just like a lot of other people have done with CoffeeScript. So all these other languages and you know fixes certain niches, but for the most part, JavaScript has very common problems that are easily fixed. Some of the other ones are not, right? Using let for scoping, um, yield and all those others for doing kind of green threading or concurrency without using threads and web workers, right? Those kind of things you have to really talk about and think about. But some of the more common things like uh, package management loaders that's been around since before I was born. Clearly there are known established solutions for fixing it. And that's what they've done with Dart Lang, right? So but they believe that Dart Lang kind of helps fill that language fix. Editor, there's no one on the market beyond IntelliJ WebStorm and Sublime. Now, obviously I know I, I met one girl who does NetBeans. That's pretty awesome. But for the most part, there's not a lot of enterprise Java unless you're using Visual Studio, right? or some other IDE in that context from an Oracle perspective. So there's really nothing that fills that gap from a mid-tier to lower small company of a professional IDE beyond IntelliJ, right? So that is what Dart ad Editor fills in that void. Number three, the virtual machine. We've already talked about Dart and that portable delivery system of applications, okay? And lastly, the compiler. Okay, we've already talked about compilers in my past videos, but the point of a compiler is I write language and it can go for now to JavaScript and to just the normal Dart, right? But let's talk about what else compilers can do. Compilers at offer a very strategic advantage for language designers and language implementers. So for example, when you are writing code, you have an intent there, but writing the intent and making it more sense to you can sometimes often lead to slower code. More readable, more oop, more abstractions, slower code, right? Compilers kind of know what you mean and can generate that code for you, right? automatic generation of code. So Dart.js offers an opportunity to generate JavaScript that's actually faster than you could write by hand. Now, some of you are awesome coders. I've seen your code. It's unreadable, but it runs wicked fast. What if you could write code that is readable? You could have an IQ around mine, right? But you can still result in faster JavaScript, right? How cool is that? Many, many, many other benefits, but that's one of the main points of the compilers that you can write in a better language and still export to JavaScript that's oftentimes faster than it's normal if you're written by hand. If you want a context for that, go look at ASM.js, ASM the Shumway and other Mozilla project where they're actually having a kind of a low level byte code. It's JavaScript, but the way they can interpret it is faster execution, right? So if you optimize around those common things that people do for Google Chrome and JavaScript, it results in faster applications all across the board for a variety of different things. So that is just one of the many things the compiler can do. So again, it can improve JavaScript, provide flexibility for compilation targets and for features. All right, so real quick, the last three business arguments of why. So we have JWT, why Dart? Well, again, JWT is for Java developers on a server. To give an example of people who don't get it, I'll see questions from Java developers who go, what is Dart? I don't understand this Dart. You know, our Java developer team, they're looking to utilize some of the Java libraries, so we, how could we interface with Dart? You don't get it. You're a Java guy, your code lives and runs on the server. You render a nice little HTML, CSS, so and JavaScript, and it delivered to the server. That's not how Dart works. Dart is embracing the client developers, those of us who write majority of our code to run on the machine, right, of the client user interface. So it's going to run on the computer, JavaScript, CSS, HTML, all right there. You download the code and it runs, right? That's what Dart does. You know what the server is at that point? A CRUD layer. It's an API layer. It doesn't do anything other than business logic and core app logic. We actually call it. It doesn't do anything with views. It doesn't send us HTML. We just say, hey, I would like to log in. It says yes or no. We'd like some data. It says yes or no and takes the session to account for certain business logic. That's it. That's where Java, Python, Ruby, whatever comes in the ball. So GWT satisfies that need for those teams that do that. But those of us who want to leverage the browser for certain APIs that only the browser or browser devices have, that's what Dart's for. For those of us who have front-end teams, that's their background, more of a design perspective, right? More visual. That's what we use. Game developers who do more runtime code on the browser or client, that's what Dart's for. More importantly, those of us who want a better user experience. Now, backends can deliver it, but if you have all the data on the client and you have that ability to refresh, you have a competitive edge, right? So those use cases are really what Dart solves versus GWT, okay? Closure versus Dart. We have Google Closure with Dart. So Dart, just like GWT, is an evolution of GWT. Closure compiler is a bunch of wonderful things to learn, okay? 
Dart is the evolution of that. They have a new compiler, it does some new things with JavaScript, offloads a lot of that weird syntax to the language itself, bakes it in, so it makes the compiler's job easier. And again, I mean, some of the GWT developers are actually on the Dart team, right? So there's a lot of mind sharing and you know genius at Google that does get you know passed around. It's not like they get to hoard those you know smart people, okay? Those experiences are being shared and contributed. And lastly, there is JS interop or JavaScript interoperation. So if you have a JavaScript app, you can interface it with Dart, right? It's not like, let's build our app in JavaScript and then build our unit test in CoffeeScript to see if we like it. <laughs> you can do that, but that's not, it's not really the concept. Like you're supposed to live and breathe Dart. You don't have to, if you just want to like, you know, take a little piece and try it, you can do that as well. It is there. From a conclusion, high level perspective, Dart is a platform, set of tools, and ecosystem around building web applications. That's what Dart really means. That's what Dart is. It is a language called Dart Lang. It is an editor called Dart Editor based on Eclipse. It is a VM or virtual machine called Dartium that runs in Chromium and someday will be in Chrome. And we believe, not, Google hasn't said anything, but we believe will be in Android as well, right? They already have a way of doing Chrome apps, right? Through Dartium and your Dart code runs at faster native speeds. We believe it'll be in you know Android and mobile someday as well. The compiler, Dart to JS, converts your Dart code to JavaScript to run in all browsers from IE8 up and all the other normal ones, mobile ones, Safari, Web, you know, Firefox, blah, 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 all that stuff. And lastly, a package manager called pub. So pub build and all these other commands. Very similar to NPM if you're familiar with that. It's uh, how you build your app, how you deploy your app. You can actually deploy libraries all right there. So that is the five things that make up Dart. And again, if you're a web developer who's interested in doing larger applications or you're a game developer who's interested in more you know, control over a language, I encourage you to check out Dart. Again, my name is Jesse Ward. And you got any questions, hit me up on email, Google+, Plus, in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. And I hope you like these upcoming Dart videos to help you get started. Thanks for your time.